Hi folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, Two Guys in a Ride. Ride. Today we're going to take a look at these 2019 Honda Accords. And one is a gas only, the other is gas hybrid. We're going to compare the two as always. I'm going to take you for a tour on the outside, talk to you about the specs, trim levels and things like that with both. And then Nathan later will take you for a tour of the inside, show you all the technology. And then we're going to take it for a drive and give you our opinion and show you some bloopers at the end. I like it. <laughs> That's my opinion. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm done. Are you ready? Yeah, we're ready to go. Let's go for a ride. <laughs> but hold on just a minute. So if you're new to our channel, please take a moment, hit that subscribe button, and always tag that bell at the top because that'll give you a notification every time we publish a new video. Am I supposed to be doing that too? Okay. A new video. And uh, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, WordPress, you Reddit, you name it. We're out there. Uh, and please like our video and comment below and let us know how we're doing. So what do you say, Nathan? Let's go for a ride. Let's go for a ride. All right. We'd like to thank our friends at Luther Honda of Mankato for loaning us these beautiful vehicles today. For the hybrid Accord, during most driving situations, power comes from the motor while the gas engine mostly serves as a generator to feed the battery. There is a 2-liter naturally aspirated 4-cylinder engine and an electric motor powered by a lithium-ion battery. Total system output is 212 horsepower. Fuel mileage is 48 city, 48 highway, and 48 combined. Now, hybrid trim levels are EX, EXL, and Touring. With the hybrid, there's no major disadvantage to buying the most efficient model. Actually, Adding all the hybrid batteries weight under the back seat and between the axles certainly aids the Accord's handling. The engine mostly works as a generator for the battery, resulting in smoother acceleration, giving you the feeling of being in a completely electric car. Now, whichever engine you get, power is delivered to the front wheels only. The new Accord does handle sprightly and with confidence, whether carving up back road switchbacks or in an emergency maneuver. Ride comfort across the line is excellent, but it truly excels in the top touring trim level where the hybrid's 18-inch wheels and adaptive suspension produce a truly superior ride. Inside both vehicles, you'll find copious amounts of passenger space. Material quality is typical Honda excellence and you'll love the stylish and user-friendly cabin layout. Honda's latest 8-inch infotainment touchscreen is on all but the basic trim levels and now includes standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So, should your next vehicle purchase be a gas or a hybrid vehicle? In the base gasoline-only Accord, there is a 1.5-liter turbocharged inline four-cylinder engine rated at 192 horsepower with 192 pound-foot of torque. It's available with either a six-speed manual transmission or a continuously variable automatic transmission, a CVT. There's also a 2-liter turbocharged inline four-cylinder engine. It produces 252 horsepower and 273 pound-foot of torque. With either a 6-speed manual transmission or a 10-speed automatic transmission, along with paddle shifters. Fuel mileage for the 1.5-liter engine is rated at 38 highway, 33 combined. The 2-liter engine delivers 22 city, 34 highway, 27 combined. Now, the gasoline trim levels on this vehicle are the LX, the Sport, the EX, the EXL as we have here, and the Touring model. Another potential difference between gas-only and hybrid vehicles is the cost of insurance. There are some insurance companies that offer discounted rates to owners of hybrid vehicles. Your best bet here is to ask your insurance carrier what the annual premium would be and then compare that to another insurance company. Now, there are some additional perks of hybrid car ownership. With a hybrid car, you'll save time by not having to run to the gas station as frequently. With a hybrid car, you could drive in the HOV lane, escaping traffic, saving time, and hopefully avoiding a little stress. You help save the environment as you have a smaller carbon footprint with a hybrid vehicle. And some companies allow hybrid owners special parking spots and other company perks. The bottom line is, 
If your goal is to drive the car or truck with the least possible environmental impact, you'll want to spend some time doing your research, taking a look at all the options. Even though automakers have greatly improved gas mileage in recent years and offer a wider range of economical gasoline models, these vehicles can still produce more pollution per mile than a comparably sized hybrid. Essentially, some hybrids are cleaner than others, and conventionally powered cars with low emissions can be cleaner than certain hybrids. So do your homework before deciding which vehicle is right for your specific needs. Now, as I stated earlier, the battery pack on the hybrid vehicle is between the axles and under the back seat. So the trunk cargo capacity is exactly the same on the gasoline only or the hybrid, and that comes in at 16.7 cubic feet. Exterior dimensions are the same on both vehicles with the overall length at 192.2 inches. Width is, not, uh, excuse me, width is 73.3 inches, height 57.1 inches, and they both ride on a wheelbase of 111.4 inches. The curb weight on the gasoline only is 3,217 pounds, and of course on the hybrid a little heavier with the battery pack, weighing in at 3,386 pounds. Okay, I want to give you a look at the styling. As I talked about earlier, you can see the headlights do have a little blue tint to it. And I like the big, bold chrome grill on the front. And it is a little windy out here, so you can see Nathan is blowing away over there. <laughs> Hang in there, Nate. But uh, I do like the uh, overall styling of the vehicle. You can see the shark fin radio antenna, and it does have the uh, sunroof. And I do like the chrome uh, strip along the top of the vehicle. Um, you know, just an overall very nice car. It does have more aerodynamic wheels. Now, uh, to get into the car, it does have the sensor touchpad on the door handles. If you have the key fob in your pocket, uh, you can just touch that or you just slide your hand behind the door handle and the uh, car will open. You know, Nathan pointed this out earlier. I like this cut line, this uh, aerodynamic seal that's there on the bottom of the car. It's a nice little detail, but it does lend to the air, overall aerodynamics of the car. You see the hybrid badging. I do like the hip line as well that runs from the front all the way back to the rear tail lights. And I like the fastback coupe look, uh, the nice sloped rear end with a short deck. Nice styling, both vehicles. You can see down below, it does have chrome uh, pieces down where you would think the exhaust tips are. However, the exhaust does not come out at that area. Uh, there are dual uh, chrome pieces on both vehicles. Uh, there is dual exhaust on the gasoline only, but there is only single exhaust on the hybrid. Overall, a very nice, sleek uh, design. Very nice. Love it. So should your next vehicle purchase be a gas or a hybrid vehicle? <clears throat> Here's a cost comparison. Let's say gas is $3 a gallon and you drive 15,000 miles a year. With the gas only Accord, 33 miles a gallon combined, that would equal out to $1,363.62 per year in fuel cost. The hybrid Accord at 48 miles per gallon combined would equal out to $937.50 per year in fuel cost. So savings for the hybrid over the gas is $426.12 a year. Now an average new car payment is $530 a month. So basically the hybrid would save you almost one car payment per year. Now, overall, hybrid cars are just as reliable as gas-powered cars. You shouldn't expect it to cost you a lot more in terms of routine maintenance. But there are some differences. For starters, a hybrid uses the brakes to regenerate the battery. Uh, brake pads on non-hybrids tend to last longer when compared to hybrid gas uh, cars only. Uh, again, this isn't a huge savings, but it is worth noting. Here we are on the inside of the 2019 Honda Accord. This is the gas version, and they are very, very similar. Uh, down here, you've got your standard window controls. You do have auto up and down in the front. 
and then you do have a two position memory seat right here and then your trunk release down here as well as some storage in a bottle holder right there over here in the seat we've got uh, eight-way power so up down up down on the back and then forward and backwards as well as tilting the seat this is kind of a neat feature so you got a lumbar support but these do that these will bring the lumbar out or put it in but then once you have the lumbar set out you can adjust that lumbar up or down according to where it feels best on your back and that is a really neat feature all right moving down over here you have your uh, a trip button right here that will just allow you to quickly push and see your uh, trip meter. You have your dashboard dimming lights right here. And then down here you have a, a button to quickly access some of the safety systems on your car. So by pushing that button you can quickly access your road departure mitigation your blind spot info system and your collision mitigation braking system it's just a quick shortcut instead of having to go through the steering wheel controls the seats are really nice leather they uh, have a sort of a perforated look uh, they are heated seats they are not ventilated or cool but they are very comfortable and they look really nice in that black Moving over here to the steering wheel control, you have your volume up and down, you have your like a seek button uh, right here, and then these three have to do with your driver's information system. So basically, if you press the home key, it's gonna bring you to all the things that you can access, and then you scroll the wheel to go through them, like that, okay? And whatever you select, you push that little wheel and then it shows up. Now you want to get back You see a trip A and trip B. I'm just rotating the wheel. Okay, if I press the back button, then I go back to this. All right, so over here in the middle, you do have a couple of things that show up and that's controlled over here by your um, adaptive cruise control setting and your lane keeping assist. So if you turn this button right here, adaptive cruise control and lane keeping go off together. Okay. Now these buttons down here, once they're on, if you want to see a graphic view, you can push that and there's your gap setting. What's fun is if you're behind a car, it again shows you the picture of the back end of a Honda as you do that. And then if you want your lane keeping assist lines on, you can turn those. You don't have to have them on, it's just a visual for you. All right, and then the rest of this is cruise control. So you've got your set button, your cancel, and your resume, plus and minus and resume. All right, and that is the steering wheel. Moving on over here to the infotainment center. This is uh, 450 watts. It has uh, 10 speakers, and uh, it does have physical buttons on the side for all the main functions, as well as rotary knobs, but it's all touchscreen as well. So uh, basically the ones that I would kind of like to show you on this one, because I've done this infotainment system before. Um, you can see one of our earlier Honda videos for that. But if I go into settings, uh, you can go to vehicle. This is set up for driver one. So according to your key fobs that you have, you can set up things differently for different key fobs. Okay, you have your tire pressure monitoring system calibration up here. You also have your driver assist system set up. So here's where you can get into a lot of your safety stuff, like blind spot information. You can turn it on or off. Traffic sign recognition system. Uh, forward collision warning distance. Now, I like this because not only is there normal and short, but there's long. And normal was already quite a distance. So um, I'm not sure if in the world of adaptive cruise controls, Audible Meal manufacturers have started to increase that distance. I have an older, 2013 Lincoln with the adaptive cruise control on it but even on like normal I don't have a choice of short and normal um, you know it, it keeps me three seconds behind the car but sometimes you like to be a little further back than that especially if it's a motorcycle or, or a semi okay um, this one here will do your adaptive cruise control 
It says you get an audible notification when a vehicle has moved in or out of adaptive cruise control range. You know, that one is set on off because you don't want to beep it all the time on you. Road departure, uh, lane keeping assist, beep, driver attention monitor, lots and lots of things in here. All right, and then we continue. Now, this is the fun one. So I'm going to go to meter setup. And there's lots of things you can do out here, but the funnest one is right here where it says adjust outside temperature display. So on the dashboard, it currently says 42 degrees. However, I have set it to be five degrees less than it really is. So I guess if you want to, uh, there is a zero. And then you hit save. And now my temperature reads 47. So on colder days, I guess if you want to make it appear warmer, you can. Or if it's a hot day, you want to make it look cooler, you can do that too. Okay, so that's your infotainment system. Down here, you have um, your dual climate control system. You have dual, dual heated seats on both sides in the front. Okay. Down here, you have your Apple CarPlay Android Auto connection as well as a charging port. You have a 12-volt, uh, 180-watt max 12-volt uh, receptacle down here. And then down here, you can see my hand disappear, but that is large enough to fit uh, almost a one of those uh, full-sized uh, uh, smartphones in there. Okay. Moving down here, the one one of the differences uh, in the gas models, you get a physical shift knob instead of a push button. So this one has a physical shift knob. You do have uh, the typical econ mode, but if you turn that on, it will tell you if you're driving economically. So uh, I, I never have that one on. You do have a uh, electronic parking brake, and then you have a brake hold which again, if you put turn this on and you come to a complete stop while you're driving, and you can take your foot off the brake and it will keep the car braked until you press the accelerator again. You have some nice cup holders right here. And then uh, moving over here to the uh, armrest, if you open this up, you do have an additional USB plug-in which will work with Android Auto or, or Apple CarPlay. And then you have a 120 watt 12 volt outlet. Okay, you have in this nice little sliding tray right here. And then you have some deep storage down in here. Over here on the passenger side, we've got glove compartment, which is an average nice size there. And then up here, you do have a automatic dimming mirror. And then this is your home link buttons underneath here. This button turns your um, automatic dimming mirror on or off and then up here you have see if we can get this to show yep you have your tilt if you push you have your open your close for your sunroof and then you've got um, your door light settings so off or do they come on when the door comes on you do have some ambient lighting that shows up right here that just kind of shines down on the center console and gives it a warm glow which is really nice it is a push start vehicle all right, let's go take a look at the passenger in the back. Okay, so here on the passenger side, we've got your uh, window control and your locks and a bottle storage and some extra storage back here. And over here on the seat on the passenger side, the uh, it is a four-way power. So it's back, forward, and then tilt for the back. There is no up or down uh, on this side. All right, let's go take a look at the back. Uh, in the back of the Honda Accord, we have this is the back door here. You got uh, the controls, you got your uh, bottle storage, and, and a little extra storage back here. Uh, this is your lock, physical lock or unlock buttons. If the rear passengers want to open their doors, you do have dual seat back pockets right here and right there along with your air vents in the rear. There are no 12 volt outlets in the rear here. Uh, you do have comfortable, very comfortable seats and you do have cup holders in the armrest, which of course can flip up out of the way. So overall, very, very, very comfortable and very nice car. 
All right, so sitting here in the back seat, I have plenty of room. Uh, Rob and I left the seats where we had them adjusted. I've got at least six inches for my knees up here, okay? And I have got plenty of a headroom here. Lots of room in the back seat. All right, so here on the inside of the Honda Accord XLE Hybrid version, there are a few differences. Now, so one of them is, of course, you notice immediately the tachometer. It's a power gauge. Okay, so right here on this power gauge, what this will do is while you're driving, um, get my finger in there, if when you're on the gas, it's going to show up here in the blue, and that needle will come up, and I'll show you how much power you're using. Uh, when you let off, so you're coasting or you're braking, then the needle dips down into the regenerative charging area and shows you how much you're recharging. A couple of other differences. If you go into the menu on this sign, you do have a couple of extra things. So you've got a power charge mode, which is what you just saw here. You also have an eco drive mode that you can look at. You also have a power flow mode that you can look at. See where all the power is going. So those three are extra on the hybrid version and everything else is the same here. If you go over to the driver's information center, there is another difference and that is you do have, if I go back here, you do have a power flow icon that you can click on. All the rest of them are the same, but this one gives you this view, okay? Still the same sound system, everything else is the same. The other difference is, is that down here, you have a push button transmission instead of a manual transmission. And you do have, of course, uh, you have an econ mode, but you also have a sport mode. And then you have all electric mode here for slow speed. So those are the main differences between the XLE gas version and the XLE hybrid version. And now, Let's go take a ride. We are driving the hybrid version of the Honda Accord. And we'll, we'll show you a little footage later, but we did uh, test out the acceleration. I think we need to frame this appropriately, Nathan. I was in the hybrid and I smoked him at two different traffic lights. And he was, he left me, he just had to figure something out. So he made me get out of the hybrid and him get into the hybrid. And then uh, I figured out he had the, the uh, economy button on the gas one. So that right. really, it really didn't make a difference on it though. It, it slowed it down quite a bit, but that's why it's right. there. So the eco mode works well. <laughs> yeah, we can attest right. to that. But if you switch it off, it's got just as much uh, get up and go uh, and just as quick as acceleration right. off the line as, as, as the, the hybrid, hybrid. does. Yeah. So, Okay, so we decided to take the hybrid because we wanted to show you on the screen uh, where it shows the uh, regenerative uh, uh, power and how it's using the gas and the battery power. You know, this does weigh more because of the battery pack, but so far I don't really feel a difference. Um, I did feel and hear a little bit of difference in taking off. Obviously, you're taking off with mostly just the battery power, so it's a lot quieter. In the gasoline, you do hear uh, input feedback from the motor, the yeah. engine, excuse me, uh, where you don't hear that feedback as much here unless you really were to floor it and, and get on with the speed. The uh, the ride in it is very nice. It's very comfortable. It oodles the leg room, uh, front and back. This is typical Honda responsive. I mean, you turn the wheel, ju you just think about turning the wheel and it goes ahead and turns for you. It is that responsive. Didn't turn for me. <laughs> well, you have to be in the driver's seat. I, but, you know, one of the things I've noticed, because I've had a Honda Accord in the past, and this one is appreciably more quieter than the other one was. Um, and that's been one of the knocks uh, on, so, on the Accord uh, I've, I've seen over time, is that they you do hear a lot of road noise and tire noise come in, but on this one, it's, it's greatly improved. Right, and give it a little, there you go, a little moving on the wheel and it turns. Now, I'm trying to see how good a fuel economy I can get on the hybrid, and Nathan's over here just flooring it, trying to I'm see, trying how, to much see how much I can burn can out. Right. But I do like the little graphic. Now, I would have to say, if I owned this car, I would uh, that would mesmerize me, because I would want to watch that all the time to see where the power was coming from. So that would probably be one screen I'd have to lock out from myself. 
you know, I like the dashboard layout. I know you, you like a lot of knobs and buttons, yes. but this is a very minimalistic approach and it's very clean. Uh, yet with this, with the touchscreen and the infotainment system here, you've got lots of information at your fingertips. Yeah. Um, and you played around with it. I know you showed the folks, so it's, it's pretty yeah. intuitive. It's not like you have to dive into 12 different sub menus to get this. It's like using your smartphone. Yeah. And then you've got your climate control with knobs and you've got your heated seats and things like that that you need to have right here. Um, I'm going to try using the paddle shifters, the next light, third gear. But does it have shift? It does have shift, shift points. With it the, does have, right. You can, uh, you can vary it. Yeah, instead of, shift points. what it does is gives you little V's next to your D symbol for drive. Uh -huh. And the lower gear you are, the more symbols you but it has it has you know has plenty of get up and go. I like the steering wheel. The seats are nice. The right. the the you know you got plenty of headroom, plenty of legroom, plenty it's of hip room. Very comfortable ride and a quiet ride. Vehicle. So what do you think, Nathan? Do do I mean we're we're just reporting this video to right. let people decide. Uh, and I'm really torn. I was kind of personally hoping this would lean me one way or the other, whether I wanted the gas or the hybrid. Uh, now, there is about a $400 a year savings. I reported that earlier in the outside uh, review that I did, uh, which, uh, you know, average car payment is 500 and some dollars a month. So that would basically save you in gas one car payment a month almost. But there are trade-offs for both, and there are advantages to both. And it's only about, the hybrid's only about, what, 1500 more? Right. And so I've, so, you know, your, your payback right away is about three years on that, three and a half years. Uh, you know, the average car is kept seven to eight years now, so I'm really torn. And I, I don't want to make a decision for the folks, but I was kind of hoping to come into this to give myself a definitive decision. So what's uh, the gas mileage sitting highway? Third, uh, 48 on the, on the hybrid. Across the board. Across the board combined. 48 city, 48 highway. Okay, and that that's that's unusual. Right. That they can get the same gas mileage highway and city. Right, because a lot of hybrids wow. will have a much lower highway right, but a higher city because typical hybrids are better in the city. Right. What What is the mileage on the gas? Version? You were going to ask me that, and I don't recall off the top of my head, but it's 38 on the highway. Okay. So it's less, I think it's around 30 in the city. So then you're talking about a huge difference if you're city driving only, you're talking about, but I went with the average of the highway miles. Yeah. Okay, when I did the calculations of saving 400 and some dollars. Obviously, the difference between 38 and 48 is less, so that's what I compared. So if you're talking about city driving on the gas at 30 and the hybrid at 48, well, then your savings per year will be a lot bigger. But is that, but, and so your payoff of the difference of the cost of them is shorter as well. But is that enough? Is that enough difference? Does it matter? The acceleration, the styling, the inside, the technology, the safety features, they're all the same. Yeah, so they're, given they're, that they're all things equal, yet a few differences, is it enough to make a difference? We're going to leave it at that because we want you to decide. We just wanted to do the film and, and report it for you. But we're at the end of our drive. Cool. So we're going to finish this up uh, with our favorite thing of the vehicle. Do you all have right. yours yet? You know, I do. Okay. So uh, I'll start. My my favorite thing, of course, I like technology, is the display on the electro, uh, electroluminescent display on the dash. Okay, so my favorite thing is pretty easy, pretty simple, but I like styling uh, and detail. So if you're a fan of the Hondas of the 70s and 80s, you'll know that they had like a two-tier dashboard. And this line running right through here kind of mimics that because the cowl over the instrument cluster always stuck up above that line a little bit on the 70s and 80 models. So it harkens back to a little history of the Honda Accords and even the Civics as well uh, with that detail line in there. So that's my favorite thing.